The Story of the Rajah Quilt. My name is Lizzie Flynn by Claire Saxby and Lizzie Newcomb. All I own in this world is my name, Lizzie Flynn. It's all I take with me as we are hustled aboard the Rajah, a cargo of convict women. We leave London today bound for Van Diemen's land. My sentence, seven years for stealing a shore. It might as well be life. I'll never see home again. I cry as they raise the anchor and ease away from the pier. Big Martha Woodhouse tells me to stop blubbering. What has England ever done for us? Except banish us to the other side of the world. And for what? For being poor, she says. The women are squabbling like seagulls. What does it matter where we sleep when everything we know is left behind? It is the end for all of us. Molly saved a space for me next to her, but Big Martha took it. On deck, a lady's talking. We climb up just as they're giving out the bags. There are needles and cotton, scissors and a comb, a Bible, some big bits of fabric and some little bits too. The little bits are for a quilt. The lady says that we will make together. I hear groans and, and Big Martha says they'll fly kites before she sews for anyone. I say nothing. The little bits are such pretty colours, reds and blues, creams and blacks. I pull out a handful and arrange them on the deck, making patterns. Molly says I have an eye for colour, and won't I help so? I shake my head. The days are getting warmer. We stop at a port but are locked in the hold and see nothing. I lay out colour pieces in the half-light, first this way and then that. We hear the crew thump-thumping above. Molly coughs. They'll be loading fresh water and meat, she says. I creep up to the deck where women are clustered, stitching. They talk about the sailors and the laughter. And the laughter gets louder until the quilt lady appears with the captain. He frowns and bids them all put their energy into their stitches. Molly asks me again to join them, so I have to tell her I can't sew. That sets the women laughing anew, and my face flushes. But Molly doesn't laugh. She shows me how to begin. I'm sewing. I feel good until I see her stitches, neat and tiny like a baby's eyelashes. Mine look like someone has thrown kindling wood all higgledy-piggledy and the cloth puckers like Big Martha's mouth. I'll never be able to do it, but Molly says, try again. So I do. I sew until the light is gone and begin in the early morning. The pieces grow into patterns, into stripes. And then Big Martha sees us sewing and curses. Fancy work for a fine lady when we have nothing. She rips fabric from my hand and howls when the needle bites. She flings it overboard and reaches for my bag. I kick her hard, though I know I'll regret it. She's four times my size and mean as a tethered bear. Three sailors haul her off and I hug the bag. I shiver. We have a long way to go and Martha won't forget. Molly squeezes me tight. I wish they'd keep Martha in the brig until we reach shore, but no, it'll only be for a day or two. These last days, Molly has stayed below. Her skin is hot and cold in turns and she's so restless that I get no sleep either. The surgeon has been and his face shows me that I have much to fear. Somewhere in the dark night, Molly slips away. Her face is peaceful now. I sit by as the sailor roughly stitch a canvas shroud for Molly. They bury her in the heaving waters. The past is a misted memory. The future has no shape. Only one thing I know. I do not want to pass from this world as if I had never been here. A storm begins to darken the sky. Sorry, a storm begins. The sky darkens and roars. The sea churns and so do our stomachs. They secure the hatches above us <clears throat> and the hold becomes a groaning mass of writhing bodies souped in a mix of vomit and filth. The smell takes away the breath I have left. It feels like we're buried alive and we'll never again see the sky. A lifetime later, the hatches are thrown wide and we clamber up to the deck. I douse myself in seawater. 
sluice the stench from my clothes. I'm happy to be alive. I'm stitching for Molly now too. The stretch, the strips stretch and the quilt grows. Land appears and eventually we enter a broad river. Forest crowds the shore on both sides and then retreats to show a township. Martha scowls as she and others are escorted to the female factory. I think they are deluded if they expect walls to contain her. I will work in a laundry here, just like at home. The quilt is done now. No matter what happens, we have made this. It will remember Molly and me, even if I only, even if only I know it. The Rajah quilt was made by convict women aboard the Rajah during their voyage from England to Van Diemen's Land in 1841. It includes 2,815 pieces and was stitched by more than 20 women. The unbacked quilt was presented to the governor's wife. She sent it back to England, possibly to Elizabeth Fry, a prison reformer who headed the committee that provided the useful bags for the women. It's not known whether the quilt ever reached Elizabeth. It was lost for 147 years before being rediscovered in a Scottish attic. The Rajah quilt returned to Australia in 1989 and is now housed in the National Gallery of Australia in Canberra. The story of the Rajah quilt, My Name is Lizzie Flynn by Claire Saxby and Lizzie Newcomb.